the other side of this wall, it could be, you could yeah. say, it looks a lot of mice and yeah, you yeah. Know, wheels and things, yeah. but yeah, it's not much here. No. They wouldn't know. Mm. Right, okay. Brian, tell me about the history and uh, what you know of the Julius totalisator. The history of the Julius to starts with George Julius. If George is remembered for anything, it's for the invention of the world's first automatic totalisator in 1913. George's contribution to uh, Australian technology extends further than this, and he was later knighted for that contribution. Some examples are he uh, was uh, a founder of the Institution of Engineers Australia and a president of that organisation. He worked towards the establishment of the organisation that became the Standards Association of Australia, and he was a chairman of that organisation. He uh, was a driving force behind the establishment of the International Standards Organisation and he was the first chairman of the CSIRO or the CSIR as it was known then. The early meetings of the CSIRO was uh, held in the premises of George's Australian Engineering Consulting Company in Sydney um, and uh, in uh, 1913 he invented the world's first automatic totalisator. That system was exported to Ellerslie and worked there for many years, as did subsequent Julius Totes. In 1917, he founded the company Automatic Totalisators, an Australian company, to further develop and export these systems. And uh, that company became a world monopoly in the field of automatic totalisators, and later it became part of an oligopoly. In uh, 1920, uh, there was a system tested, a, a, total, a Julius Totalisator, built and tested in 1920 and it was capable of supporting 1,000 terminals and a cell rate of 250,000 per minute, which is good by today's standards. This is a real-time multi-user system long before the electronic systems that made those concepts commonplace. Uh, some other systems, one, a couple of the larger ones, Longchamps was installed in 1928 with 273 terminals and uh, the one at White City ended up with 320 terminals. These systems were subject to ongoing development work and uh, a couple of examples. In 1917, they became electromechanical like this one here. Prior to that, they were purely mechanical. Uh, this was driven by the need for support for more machines, a higher cell rate and more distributed points of sale. And in 1927, automatic totalisators developed the world's first odds computer. And prior to that time, the Julius Tote displayed uh, pool grand totals and the runner totals. When, the, when this machine was introduced, obviously brand new to, to the industry, people had to be trained in, the, in methods of how to operate it? Um, the uh, training for the ticket issue machine operator now we're going to get off onto there. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay, right. Yeah. All right. So, so tell, I mean, yeah. obviously then the influence on... We can right. edit all this, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll stop yeah. and start that. Yeah. The influence on, on a machine like this in, in the early days yeah. would have been astronomical to, the to racing. impact of the Julius Tote, uh, it was a long-held belief at the time that the introduction of the automatic totalisator would uh, um, eliminate, if not go a long way, to controlling the amount of illegal gambling that was taking place. Uh, it, also it also increased the sell rate and uh, consequently the turnovers. It improved the um, betting information available to the public. Uh, it reduced the amount of uh, uh, operational labour costs. It reduced the uh, amount of uh, operational mistakes and uh, it, uh, where, where systems of um, pre-printed uh, tickets were used, it uh, saved the waste associated with unsold pre-printed tickets. When contemplating the impact of these systems, I have often wondered about a nickname that a Paris newspaper applied to the um, Longchamp system, which was the insatiable Moloch. Um, Moloch, my understanding of him was he was the god of the Canaanites, and demanded extreme sacrifice. Uh, my conclusion was that uh, unlike the populations of today, the people had not seen a system that extracted large amounts of money from large numbers of people, and I translate that name into uh, the observation of a system that had an appetite for money that could not be satisfied. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it, that 
where this sits right now on the other side of a, with a tote wall and everything else, no one would even remotely consider what the workers were like. Um, I find it ironic that for a nation that stops for a horse race uh, and uh, where most of the population would know what the TAB is, uh, that they don't know anything about the history of the tote and that there was half a decade of uh, um, a very um, um, intense Australian activity in the totalizator field and in fact they started the business um, before uh, the advent of the TABs. In fact, um, although they started the automatic tote, uh, the French company CPM uh, replaced the uh, uh, system at Longchamps with a computer system and their engineers were so impressed with the system, uh, the old system, that they um, donated large parts of it to the Musée des Arts et Métiers. Um, yeah. That's right. So it's, it's, a fair, it's, a fair, um, it's a fair feather in Australia's cap that this machine basically revolutionised punting around the world. I think we've been there, haven't we? Is that, have we done that uh, around? Oh, OK. Uh, just oh, oh, OK. Oh, that's a lead into the around, yeah, where they were around the world. That's right. Yeah, OK. All right. So basically, so Australia, you know, George, comes, uh, George invents this machine. Everybody uh, from around the world uh, utilised it. So it's, it's a fair for Australia's cap that you know, we, we led this. Um, yes, uh, the systems were all around the world. Um, there were installations in Australia. There are some documents that display uh, snapshots of the systems as they were at the time. I've got one at home that uh, lists an A4 page of uh, 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 installations in Australia and uh, two and a half pages of installations. This is A4 pages of installations in New Zealand. Make of that what you will. Having mentioned New Zealand, I might mention that George's uh, father, Churchill Julius, became the Archbishop of New Zealand. Um, other installations were in Southeast Asia, uh, including Singapore. Uh, then there was uh, India, Ceylon, um, South Africa, France, England, Wales, Scotland, uh, Canada, United States, and South America. That's a fair. It's a, that's not a bad, uh, bad evidence. That's worldwide dominance, really. There was a document in 1970, a company document that. Uh, indicated the company had installations in 29 different countries. By that time, of course, some of them would have been computer totes. Sure. Beautiful. Let's stop there.